my, 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 my. What we, we've got. Uh, you have to forgive me because I'm fucking exhausted and a little loopy, which is going to make tonight even more interesting, I'm sure. Are you sending a telegraph there? I'm allowed to. Did it, 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 did it. It's not news that I'm a loud typer. And I have like the quiet keyboard even. Well, that's a lot. I, I type with two fingers. I type with this finger and this is going to look like I'm doing it for effect, but I'm not. And I type with this finger. <laughs> well, you picked the right ones. Yeah. All right. Shall we get started? Why do you need a nap? What, me? They're saying you need a nap. Yeah, I've been up a long time. I've been up like since four, I think. Oh. AM, not PM. I've been working. Okay. Making stupid videos for money. Internet. Okay. Shall we begin? Let's begin. Okay. Each week, Catherine goes out in the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff. Brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Now, I often on my show, I make I made the comment that we are not the fucking professionals. We should not be. What's well, too big? What? <sighs> I'm already screwing shit up. Now it's too small again. Now you uh, never mind. See, I, I can't even get the the the, the screen alterations. This is not a professional quality outfit here. Well, to be fair, I was watching a movie, so I moved my monitor closer, so I should move it farther away. <laughs> Sorry. So, it is with... I don't know if it's chagrin or fear when stuff like this happens from a professional. Um, real CNN poll... Did space aliens, time travelers... Oh, come on. Get back here. Yeah, I'm fucking everything up. Oh, I saw that. Poor Don Lemon. Did space aliens, time travelers, or beings from another dimension make Flight 370 disappear? Okay, I used to be a total CNN junkie. I used to watch CNN, like, easily 10 hours a day. I would just leave it on. I still love Anderson Cooper. He's my guy. Don Lemon is also really good. And since this poor plane disappeared, they've been making this poor bastard do an hour every night. Of like, for a while, he was literally just reading tweets on the air for an hour about this plane. It's horrible. And like, they, yeah, they, they did a thing on, like, could a black hole have swallowed the plane? And they actually brought an expert on the air to explain why no, a black hole. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from shut up. This is our news. I know. I mean, here, I like I minored in journalism. This hurts me. This hurts me right here. Tara, you realize we're we're more professional and, and better at informing the public than CNN. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. <laughs> We're informing the public not to put guns up their vagina. Okay. It's an important, it, it's an important message. It needs to get out there. I don't think we're in the same market. Well, now that we've, uh, we've covered that quick one, let's get to the actual meat of the nonsense. Um, Mile High Club. I, I, everybody. Are you going to tell us you remember? Regardless, everybody, you know, it's Ooh, that wasn't a denial. Everybody talks about this damn thing. And it's that one thing that you're you always wonder, how do people get away with that, especially on a long flight? Because have you ever done an uh, like a cross? Yeah, you've done cross yeah. Atlantic on Ireland. That's a long flight. You get in the middle of the night. It's dead quiet on there. Oh, yeah. So I that's that's why I don't understand <laughs> the Mile High Club, it's not for screamers. It's really not. Not for screamers. A drunken British woman busted for allegedly having loud sex on Las Vegas flight. The woman in her 20s. Why? Go her. 
it gets worse. Uh, was cuffed after Flyers complained of hearing loud sex noises come from the plane's restroom and the crew busted the door down. The woman also hurled names at the crew members. All this took place as she was allegedly traveling with her parents. <laughs> did, she, did she meet somebody on the plane? Yes. Okay, look. <laughs> I know things happen. I know one night stands happen. I don't, there's nothing sexy about the TSA line. I, th there's really nothing sexy about planes. I don't even get the Mile High Club thing because airplanes are like the least sexy thing in the world. And everything in that bathroom is just, you don't want to touch it if you can afford, if you can... Well, and everything in the actual plane has that weird sterile but not yeah. smell, and it, the air. It, I don't. I don't get it. Plus, I'm afraid of heights. So, but like, you meet somebody on a plane and you nail them in the bathroom. That's while your parents are right. And those are not one flight stand. Ah, uh, thank you, Emily. Well, while your parents, those are not thick walls. Those are not even, this barely, the doors on those barely qualify as walls. Yeah. And. I'm, see, I, I'm, I'm stuck on the, met somebody on the plane and nailed them on the plane. Oi! Like, did you see Red Eye? Did you not see Red Eye? No, I didn't. Do you want to wind up like Rachel McAdams? No. Who is Rachel McAdams? Rachel McAdams, the actress. Yeah, I don't know her. She was Regina George. You're killing me. You haven't seen Mean Girls? It's like a third of my I win! I win! Now you know! Now like you know! Of my fucking vernacular. You need to see that movie. It's on Netflix. <laughs> if you want to understand me, you need to see that movie. That's your homework, everybody. It's a brilliant piece of film written by Tina Fey back when Lindsay Lohan was still hot. <laughs> anyway, Rachel, red eye, Rachel McAdams meets a guy on the plane and they're like flirting. And it turns out he's, well, I don't want to give it away, but he's a horrible person who winds up doing horrible things to her. And basically you don't fuck people you meet on a plane. Well, I just, cause you know, your parents, Oi, so, Beverly, is that our girl in the bathroom? Because it sounds like she's in trouble. Yeah, also maybe don't loudly fuck anybody within 10 feet of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> she was so loud they broke the door down. They obviously thought there was something wrong. Well, no, not necessarily. <laughs> So, yeah, um, I've got more bad schooling. Where is Liam Neeson when you need him? Guy with a username that's all letters and numbers? He's doing the Lego movie. Um, so, we got more stuff from the, the uh, <laughs> schools, and it's from California, which, big fucking surprise, if it's something stupid, I expect it to come from Florida. If it's something stupid involving a school, I expect it to come from California. <sighs> and this, is, this isn't just stupid. This is borderline evil, I think. California 8th grade assignment. Was Holocaust real or political ploy? Oh, come on. Whether the Holocaust happened is no longer up for debate at Southern California's Rialto Unified School District. The initial assignment given to 8th graders in the San Bernardino County District was to do some research and write an essay explaining whether they believed the Holocaust was a real historical event or a political scheme to influence public emotion and gain. On the one hand, I get this. You want to teach kids how to prove things, how to do research. Right. But maybe pick something less controversial. Yes. Because, you know, I want to say the moon landing, but that's a whole No. Worms. No. <laughs> like, Can't do the moon landing. Like, 
I don't, I can't even think, but like maybe pick something that people don't actually, you know, have strong feelings about like, I just, these are, these are teachers. Allegedly, these are educated individuals. And someone thought it was, not only did someone think it was a good idea, someone else said, yeah, you run with that. Yeah. I mean, and I, Holocaust denier is one of those things I just don't get. Like, where do you think six million people just went? Did they all just hop a fucking spaceship? Spaceship! Like, there there are graves. There are, like, there are camps. Like, no, but was this an elaborate hoax? Because that's a pretty motherfucking elaborate hoax. You know, I, I, I wonder if they actually think, you know what? If we, if we disbelieve it hard enough, we will restore Hitler's reputation. But Craig Ferguson does a bit about how, uh, you know, sometimes we like latch on to things that are insignificant about people. And he's like, you know, that's like saying Hitler's a vegetarian. It's true, but it's not exactly the lead. Is <laughs> and then he does. He's like, you know, they don't mention that in the Whole Foods. Oh, soy, blah, blah, blah. You know who else is vegetarian? Hitler. <laughs> Ah, just, I, uh, uh. Oh, there we go. Everybody went to the bathroom. Ah, okay. That Six million people all just went. Speaking of the bathroom. Thank you. Gave me a segue. I don't, I don't like that superpower. <laughs> you tell. Inadvertently giving you segues. That's the worst yep. mutant power ever. I am the least useful X-Man in the fucking world. What's your mutant power? What like what would even my name be? Segway. Segway. There you go. Right there. Segway. I'd have to ride around on one of those stupid fucking things forever. Someone's drawing this as we speak. I'm riding three miles an hour toward the crime so that I can accidentally tell Nash how to tell you about it. That's how I save the day. <laughs> Worst superpower ever. This is uh where's this one from? Um Seattle. Family man steals toilet from Subway restaurant. Oh, ew. I know. Police are looking for a man who allegedly stuffed a restaurant's toilet tank into a black garbage bag and stole a portion of the toilet Sunday night. According to police employees at a Subway located in the uh, 4700 block and 42nd Avenue Southwest called police to report a theft. Employees told police that a man and his family walked into the subway bathroom to order sandwiches. Wait, that's badly written. Walk, no, if you just added the word bathroom where it isn't. Walked? No, no, I did. Employee Employees told police that a man and his family walked, walked into the subway oh. bathroom to order sandwiches. All right, never mind. It's badly written. I've never ordered oh. sandwiches in the bathroom before. I didn't know they offered that service. I don't think I'd partake in that service. No. <laughs> While employees made the sandwiches, the man went to the bathroom and was gone for, quote, quite some time. The man was gone for so long, the man's wife and children left without him. A short time later, police say the man emerged from the bathroom carrying a large black plastic garbage bag and quickly left the restaurant. They later walked into the bathroom and found the toilet tank missing. The still-running bathroom sink was also stuffed with paper towels and the bathroom key was stolen. Why just the tank? Why? Why do why at all? Well, clearly he wants to be one of the wet bandits, which is why he left the sink running. I think that's obvious. Clearly, this was either Joe Pesci or whatever that other guy's name is. Of all. But why just the tank? Why? How do you, I, can, I didn't even know you could take the tank off a toilet and leave the rest of the toilet there. I thought it was all one piece. I, how did no one else go into the bathroom in that entire time? Well, no, 
Oh, most subway bathrooms, they don't have stalls. It's just a single bathroom. Oh, it's a one per. Oh, well, at that point, I'd be like, after like an hour, I'd be like, hey, you dead? Hello? Because, you know. No, haven't you seen clerks? You check. You check. You fucking check because somebody might actually die in there. Yeah. But no, this was planned. This was a heist. What are you going to do with just a toilet tank? I don't know. Do you really, really need a redneck planter for your front lawn? <laughs> I, he needed it so badly, he enlisted his wife and kids as the distraction. I'm not sure they were in on it because they left without him. Well, may. So you oh, think. You, I guess if you didn't know, wouldn't you start to miss your husband after a while? Yeah, I mean, just like, or just like, nah, he ain't coming up back. Come on, kids, let's go get a new one. Does daddy just disappear in the bathroom's office? <laughs> okay, oh, I like that. To, uh, the Does channel. Have a wide stance? Daver, today on this old house, we're going to show you how to replace your toilet tank with a budget. I really want to know why just the tank. Just the tank. I, I didn't even know you could take them apart. I thought it was all one big thing. I guess it depends on the toilet. You gotta wonder, did the cop trying to write that the fuck up? Stolen a toilet. And wouldn't that spray water all over? Because you have to turn yes. off the well, water. He apparently did not turn the water off. Because the... So then you left the sink on. Oh, the sink. the toilet's probably spraying water. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying, if you take the tank off a toilet, yeah. there's running water. I don't know. <laughs> of all the fucking things. Maybe he left a $5 foot long in the wrong place and was trying to get rid of the evidence. That was like, that was like a fifth grader joke. I apologize. That, that. was that really that I live with an eight year old boy now. <laughs> it's a fact it's and it's coming into play. Yeah. It's one night you're just going to show up on the air and just start making fart noises. No. <laughs> so we have we, we've seen many attempted robbers <laughs> taking the to, taking the loot of the poo. <laughs> Little inversion. Don't that do that. He'll play that video again. I will. I totally will. He'll do it. It was magic. We all enjoyed ourselves. He'll let the monkeys out. Um, so we've seen the, the, uh, attempted robberies that have gone ridiculously wrong. Like the one who tried to, to rob the place call from the other head. side. Yeah. The call hit. I will give the, this next guy. He at least went by the book. He just should have been a little bit more careful about the materials he used as part plan note demanding money written on grocery receipt lead oh. Oregon police to bank robbery suspect yeah contain the last four digits of a food stamp account <sighs> which led to the suspect's name and phone number the telephone service provider came up with coordinates of the phone's location Bulletin newspaper. That's where uh, Ben police arrested 54 year old Robert Short on theft and robbery charges. He denied the charges, saying he never keeps receipts and would have thrown it in the trash where anyone could have picked it up. That is a possibility. I mean, how many receipts do you throw away a day that have like the last four digits of your debit card on them? The store I work at, we take people's names. Your name is on all your receipts. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that the, the guy who your was sitting name in the city you live in is on all your receipts, which is a little creepy, but that might work, except the guy sitting in the bank go, yeah, that's the dude. Well, yeah, but I mean, as, as excuses go, that's not bad, except for the whole security camera and witnesses. thing. Yeah, that kind of that kind of fucks. But if up, you're right? going to make an excuse in that situation, that's a pretty good one. It's the you, best you can do, really. You would check this shit, man. Yeah, well, dude, I would. Moment, I guess you just reach for any. I mean, at least you didn't write it on the back of a check. No, 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 no. You don't spur the moment that shit. You get all the letters from magazines and you make that that note at home and then you scan it and you make a copy of it so you don't have the original letters. You put 
a lot of thought into this. I watch so many cop procedurals. It's not even funny. They don't even they don't have enough initials anymore. CSI you SUV is a cop procedural type of guy. I do. Totally. I've like you need to start watching the following. It's so deliciously horrible. It's the worst show on television, and it's like gleeful about being the worst show on television. It's amazing. It's like fucking avant garde. Is it as bad as the time on Bones where they scanned the bones and there was a virus, a computer virus etched into so the computers? Worse. worse. Wow. So much worse. <sighs> it's a cult of serial killers that all look like Abercrombie models. It's fucking art. So. It's the new Dadaism. It's you, proof that life is meaningless. You keep setting me up here. You need to stop. I, I'm not. I don't even have to. Dadaism, really? Life is meaningless. Just dance naked in the street. They were nihilist, man. They kept saying they didn't believe in anything. It was a bizarre, disturbing spectacle that grew a crowd of up to 30 people at a busy intersection in northwest Houston. Spectators pulled out their cell phones and began recording when they saw a naked man dancing in the median. Neighbors said he's been known to attract attention in a nearby complex, but they never expected this. Um, parents at the complex said they were especially concerned because several children saw the nude man's performance. Okay, guys... I know you're looking out for your kids. I know you want to protect them. I know stranger danger. I, I feel you. I do. But I hate to tell you this, male or female, at some point in their life, your child is going to see another human being naked. It is going to happen. You can't stop it. You're going to have to deal with it. Here's the paragraph I enjoy. He was doing the Beyonce, the surfboard, twerking, the nene. Every dance that's out there right now, he was doing. <laughs> Witness Chad, our, I didn't know what was next. I didn't know what was next. <laughs> uh, I like that he went through all the. That, that almost sounds like, what's that song? Do the mashed potato, do the twist. So, um, Land of a Thousand Dances. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if we can have it. Can there we, we go. A video. Yeah, there's a very small video because I can't get it on the. Yeah, you can see very small bits here. The uh, the news report. There he very is. Small bits. Very yeah. small bits. That's just, that's just juvenile. Very small, blurry bits. Um, yeah, apparently you know, we have an answer about how he ended up there. I'm not even watching the video. I'm just looking at the still, and there's like this little girl in the background, just like. Really? And the film, yeah, she's just like. All right. They, they, we actually have an explanation on how he ended up there. He's been using embalming fluid too high. All right. Another bad editing. He's been using embalming fluid too high. Can you do that? You shouldn't do that. What's in embalming fluid? Enough stuff that makes flesh not rot. That's enough right there to make me go, I don't want that anywhere near me while I'm alive. That would be bad. That would. My body would not like that. The lengths people will go to to get high, really, really. Embalming confused. fluid. Are we really right? The uh, are we running out of the other drugs? Are we out? <laughs> this we're going to have to add this to our list of like our our 10 commandments. No one wants to see your dick. There's nothing sexy at the Walmart. We still have plenty okay. of drugs. The, the old drugs still work. The old drugs still work. <laughs> the old drugs still work. Just smoke a joint. Just it's it, OK. We can go check in the back. I'm sure we have more in stock. Just go to Colorado. It's legal now. Just get a huge bag of weed. And the worst thing that's going to happen to you is you're going to eat a lot of Cheetos. Instead of dancing naked. Apparently, uh, apparently he was giving quite the performance. I want to know if he gave them the helicopter dick. <laughs> it wasn't on this guy's list of dances. 
is it? Why are women so fascinated with that one? Who wouldn't be? <laughs> it's fascinating. Come on. <sighs> it's an impressive maneuver. If you can do it, <laughs> don't send me any evidence, but... Yeah, you're kind of opening the door there. Don't, don't. That's Pandora's box, darling. That one. I don't want to know if you can do it. Just if you can. Cool. So we've seen people get drunk and cause destruction. I think this is the single. This is the most destruction caused by a single drunken human being on our show ever. Is it more than Hemingway there? Half a million dollars. Wow. And I do, I, I do want to say the sound of my own, the sound of my own I am alert just startled me. Drunk Irishman pleads to causing five hundred thousand dollars damage to Australian hotel. All right. What's up, Ireland? Is that pronounced Patrick? No, it's good. Potter egg. Patrick. Okay. It's the Gaelic for Patrick, but it's Patrick. It depends on the region. Some in some areas the D is silent, and some it's not. Well, Padre Gaffney tw- turned on a fire hydrant valve and flooded the building while drunk. Gaffney woke up in a daze before staggering outside his room, staggered down the emergency exit stairs to the eighth floor, where he turned on a fire hydrant valve and flooded the building, causing more than half a million dollars in damage. Yes, the hotel had to be evacuated, and the fire brigade was called as a drenched Gaffney returned to his room. When police later knocked on his door, his hair was still dripping wet, but he had no memory of the incident. And you know what? Still better than the guy who wandered in the lobby with the end of the fire extinguisher. <laughs> Off his ass! Oh my god! Because that's a thing that happened in reality. That did. That was on our show. I just it. <sighs> oh, apparently a drunk Apney woke up just after midnight, walked down the hallway and urinated. Wearing just a pair of underpants, Apney took the emergency exit <laughs> down to the eighth floor, turned on the fire hydrant valve, causing a large amount of water to start gushing out. Every floor beneath, beneath the eighth floor was soon flooded. Yes, I had to be evacuated. Wet, wet and naked, Gaffney then walked up to the 10th floor, woke up a guest at apartment 1001 who gave him a pair of underwear. Okay, that's that is a Samaritan right there. That's just neighborly. Gave him a pair of underwears. Excuse me, can I borrow a cup of underpants? You haven't got any niggas on. (laughs) Oh, my God. I have drunk many things in great quantities in my life. I have never been half a million dollar destroy the fucking hotel drunk. I'm trying to think what's like the worst thing I've done drunk. I've thrown a lot of things at a lot of people drunk. I slapped a couple guys for really no good reason. Just up and slap them really hard. Yeah, but even there, still, that's half a million dollars worth of damage. Ugh. Yeah, no, no. I, like, covered a dude's house in glitter. <laughs> nothing, nothing really close to this. So, what did we learn this that's week? A, that's an expensive level of drunk. When drunk? You know what? Learn some limits, essentially, because there's... I think the more important lesson is that if you show up at a hotel room door naked in Australia, there's a chance somebody will just give you underwear. Australia is that kind of country. They're friendly. They're there. really neighborly in Australia. Well, they have to be because everything's trying to kill them. Right. I was just going to say, they're like, do you know what the spiders can do here? Cover that shit up, man. Yeah. They, they, they have to be. Everything here is poisonous and covered in spikes. Learn your limits. I pretty much assume that everything in Australia is poisonous and covered in spikes. 
We've learned that the old drugs still work. We've said it many times. We'll say it many times again. The old drugs still work. Stop. It's like falling fluid. That's such a bad idea. I don't even know what's in that shit. And it just sounds like such a bad idea. Dude, it's just like getting bored and like, you know what? I wonder if I get high off this. Maybe I can get high off this. Maybe I can get high off this. Just go around putting your tongue on shit to see if you get high. Oh, everybody doesn't do that? No. No. Um, good to know. We, I, I don't do that either. We've learned that there is a chain of evidence. Yeah. Um, Try not to use anything with your name or account numbers on it to rob places. Because you can say, no, I totally threw that away and it would work, except they saw you. Well, I honestly, at that point, does the receipt matter? You're on camera. No, no, I can explain. I can explain the receipt. Okay. Yeah. Does it matter at that point? I don't think it does. We've learned that people will steal anything that's not nailed down and some things that are. Yeah. A toilet tank. Just a tank. From a, and here's the thing. I mean, I'm betting most people go out of their way not to ha even touch a public toilet. To yeah. have as little skin contact with a yeah. public toilet as possible. Let alone to touch it enough to steal it and then bring it home. And I love how he like put it in the plastic bag like he was being subtle. Like why shit. don't you just go around and lick everything and experience all the bacteria. I wonder if just this toilet I wonder if this toilet can get me high. Eh. We learned that. Oh, well, actually, Mythbusters prove that your average kitchen sponge has about a hundred thousand times the bacteria of a toilet seat. My nephew's really into Mythbusters these days. It's been very educational. <laughs> Pretty much everything in your house is grosser than your toilet seat. We've learned there are still people trying to do PR for Hitler all these years later. Hmm. <sighs> Write a report proving that grass is really green. Yeah, anything, anything. Just don't involve Hitler. Don't don't bring Hitler into it. it it's better just to if it's got Hitler, get, look for the Hitler free section. You know, just try and stay away from the shit that because I get probability just supports that there's at least one Jewish kid in that class. And does that Jewish kid need that shit? No, that Jewish kid does not. On top not of saying that that kid's not saying that that kid's oppressed in his daily life, but that kid just doesn't need that shit. Also, if he's got a, like, a if he's got a relative who is a survivor, that could make for an awkward parent teacher conference. <laughs> makes for a slam dunk on that report, though. Yeah, uh, Holocaust. I was there. Give him an A. Done. And finally, we learned Holocaust. <laughs> Excuse me. It's in type. And finally, we learned tonight. If you're a screamer, you're probably not eligible for the Mile High Club. Don't don't fuck people you meet on planes. Well, maybe later, you know, after the third date or something. But not right there and then. I mean, at least wait till after the bad on air on board meal. <laughs> Ugh, bath in the bathroom. Because here's the thing. If it's really bad, you're trapped with them for like another four or five hours. If something really humiliating happens, if you can't get it up, if it just is bad, you're trapped in a metal tube with them at 35,000 feet for a number of hours. <laughs> I'm stuck there. That's that's just. That it's like the walk of shame 
from the Twilight Zone because there's no place the to go. The fucking walk of shit that never ends. <laughs> it's the sitting still of shame for hours. Submitted for your approval. Because then you're sitting in a place that recycles the air and you reek of sex. 